Hi, this is Yankee from Gadget Byte, and today we'll look at the Infocus Epic One smartphone that is priced at rupees thirty thousand here in Nepal. So let's get started. Probably the best feature of the Infocus Epic One is the design, as it stands out among everything else. I was impressed by the design of its back, as it features a high-quality brushed metallic back. It has a premium feel to it when you are holding it in your hands. Having said that, the smooth and glossy back can result in the device being extremely slippery. But the rounded edges make the Infocus Epic One comfortable to hold. The design at the front, however, looks bland and odd. Also, the front bottom bezel is something I didn't like about the phone. Talking about the display, it sports a 5.5-inch IPS display with full HD resolution. Right off the box, the first thing you notice about the display is that black band. Other than the annoying black band, the display is quite vibrant and colorful. It is not quite saturated and popping like that of an AMOLED display, but it is still good. I had no problems viewing the screen under direct sunlight. I'm also a fan of cooler displays, and the Epic One didn't disappoint me. Software-wise, the Infocus Epic One comes with Android 6.0 Marshmallow out of the box, with Infocus's very own snappy and lacky in life UI on top. Right off the box, it doesn't feature any app drawer, but this can be changed by the preference setting. Even though I'm inclined towards stock Android, I didn't mind using the Infocus Epic One. Underneath the hood, the Infocus One is powered by a MediaTek Helio X20 SoC that combines with a decacore processor with a clock speed of 2.1 GHz. The processor is aided by 3 GB of RAM and Mali T880 GPU. Now on the real-life performance, the Epic One is a classic example of the statement, more cores doesn't mean better performance. Well, it's not that the device lags all the time, but while playing games, it stutters. The Epic One also got me worried when it heated up while playing high-end games or watching videos. This heating issue also arose when I was charging the device. Having said that, the heating issue doesn't persist while doing day-to-day -day tasks. So if you are not a heavy user, you shouldn't care about these issues at all. But if you are, you should be looking somewhere else. The Infocus Epic One houses a USB Type-C port for charging and connectivity options. Alongside the port is a single speaker grill. The speaker sounds good but lacks the stereo sound effect that we all love. There is also an infrared sensor on the top of the device. The IR is a welcome addition in the device. Storage-wise, the Infocus Epic One comes with 32GB of onboard storage which can be expanded up to 128GB. Talking about the rear-facing fingerprint scanner, it's not accurate as I expected at this price range and there are faster fingerprints in devices which cost lesser than the Epic One. The Infocus Epic One is equipped with a 16 megapixel rear facing camera with f2.0 aperture lens. It is accompanied by a dual tone flash. Infocus has claimed the device's optical zoom to really shine, but it didn't quite live up to my expectations. However, I really liked the pictures that came out of the Infocus Epic One. They were well saturated, vibrant, and colorful. In the dark environment, the pictures come out quite noisy. They, however, aren't as overexposed as other devices of this price range. At the front, the Epic One is embedded with an 8 megapixel front facing camera. It takes some decent social media ready selfies. It, as expected, suffers in low light. The Infocus One has dual SIM slots for hybrid nano SIM card, which means that the buyers will have to choose between a secondary SIM and a micro SD card. It does support 4G connectivity, which is a necessity since Nepal Telecom has already started the service here. The Infocus Epic One is equipped with a 3000 mAh battery. On paper, a 1080p display and a 3000 mAh battery might sound like a good match, but the reality is the exact opposite. Under heavy uses, I got around 3 hours to 3.5 hours of screen on time. The battery life certainly disappointed me as I had high expectations from it. But hey, there is an inclusion of fast charging. I got from 1% to 60% in just around 48 minutes, which is pretty good in my experience. So in short, the Infocus Epic One is a device with great aesthetics, good camera and an average performance, even with a decacore processor. To be the best of the lot, the Infocus One still needs to perform well and have a better battery life. However, if you don't play games too often and want a good looking phone with reliable camera, 
and a vibrant display, then the Epic One is the right choice for you. Otherwise, there are lots of other devices in a lesser price range which are certainly better than the Epic One in terms of performance and battery life. So that's all for the quick review of the Epic One. To learn more about this phone, check out our detailed article review. The link is in the description below. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe us for more tech reviews like this. Who says you cannot control the way you surf the internet? Now you can with Vionet's Fiber Home Rush. Boost your speed from 2 Mbps to 10 Mbps. Save your high speed data whenever you want. It's that simple. To subscribe, call us now 4217555 or visit our website. Vionet, the best thing that happened to the internet in Nepal.